Hey guys, Clint here. How you doing tonight? That's great. I'm doing good. This guy. Okay. RCMP. RCMP has wants to be unionized. RCMP members want to have a union. And there's a fella. He's the bigwig. He's the president of the NPF, National Police Federation. I'm going to say his name wrong, but he is the guy. His name's Brian... Sove. Did I say it right? I don't know. Or Sovi. How about that? I don't know. Brian Sove. He's the guy. He just sent out a video. I'm going to show you the video. And it's to encourage members to... I guess RCMP members are having a hard time right now. I'm just guessing because I'm not a cop anymore. I'm retired. But I'm thinking that they're having a pretty rough time. I heard that they're not even allowed to take holidays. Maybe that has been lifted, but they can't even have holidays right now because of the COVID. I guess the COVID's an issue. Even though on Vancouver Island, we've had five cases in three months. But I guess it's a it's a big deal that the commissioner had to put a stop to leave. I'm going, I'm, I'm blabbering on here. Okay. So, Brian Sove, let's go through the video. I like this guy. Okay, I like him. I've called him twice in my career. And uh, he's a good guy. He seems like a good guy. I want to see his video. Let's see what Brian has to say. Hi, everyone. I know the past few weeks have been difficult, demeaning, and frustrating. I guess it's been uh, demeaning and frustrating for the past couple of weeks. I feel it. I'm not even a cop anymore. And I feel that. Uh... Yeah. It has been for us as well because the more we weigh in directly, the more some leaders and media recycle negative comment and out of context stories. What? The media? Recycling negative comments? Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Brian. Leaders, though. What do you mean by that? Leaders and media. What did he mean by that? Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but... This is what I've been saying for the past three weeks. Okay, man. You're bang on. Let's keep it going. God, you seem awkward though, but good guy. Nice shirt. I don't know about the white shirt though, Brian. Underneath the collar? I don't know. Almost anything we say generates another round of sensational coverage and response, and we don't want to keep adding fuel to the sensational media fire. Disagree with that. I say we add fuel. We don't want to add fuel? I don't know, Brian. I think we do. I think I think it's time we add fuel. We never have before. Let's give it fuel. We don't want to add fuel? Yeah, we do. I say we turn it up. I say we, we finally say something. Add it. That's what we need to do. Add it. Are you tired of never saying anything? And what does that mean? Almost anything we say adds... What did he say? Almost anything we say generates another round of sensational coverage. Almost anything we say generates a sensational... Da, 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 da. No, it doesn't. We don't say anything. Nobody says anything. When I was a cop, we didn't say anything ever. We, we said it to each other. But fuel, man, I don't know. Add it. Like, it's time to turn it up. It's time to speak. It's time to talk. For once. Let's talk. Let's say it. Every cop should have a podcast. Even though nobody's listening to me. Maybe one day they will. But, uh, no, it's time to add fuel. For sure. It's time to say something. Mosquitoes. Keep on going, Brian. You're doing all right. To accomplish that, we focused mainly on telling the stories of all the good work you do in your communities each and every day through everyday hero stories on our social media channels and elsewhere. Here's just a few examples. Hero stories coming up. Can't wait to hear this. 
RCMP members in Langley helped gather 700 liters of food and more than $2,000 donated by Aldergrove, BC residents for the local food bank. That's nice. I love Langley. I fucking love Langley. I used to live in Langley. I lived in Walnut Grove. I sold my house. It's worth over a million dollars now. That's wonderful. But uh, I don't know. Have you seen these pictures? God, guys. Several RCMP members. Oh, what are you doing? Don't do that. <laughs> oh, my God. Is his thumb in his pocket? I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing this, but he's wearing blue gloves and a mask. Like members are actually wearing masks right now. <laughs> like it's, you know you're not. Oh no! Nice watch. But uh, what is that? White sunglasses? What are you doing? Come on, you know better. You know better. What the hell is your thumb doing in your pocket? And why are your pants so tight? He's probably a great guy though. Is he a corporal? Yeah, it looks like a corporal. Oh, a corporal. <laughs> oh. I get a kick out of this shit. You know what's funny about it? He's hiding his gun. Is that, isn't he? Or is his gun on the right side? I can't tell. Like, why is this? Awkward. Awkward. Really awkward. Whoever you are, don't ever... Get your picture taken again. Let's keep on going. Because that that's really nice that Langley did that, though. I mean, that's good. Several RCMP members in Grand Prairie, Alberta, are fostering dogs into their homes until they're adopted after they were surrendered to the shelter due to the pandemic. That's a little weak. I mean, if we're going to talk about heroes and nice stories, I don't know. Why were dogs surrendered? To the SBCA. Does he say SBCA? Why, why would that happen? Be just because of the COVID. I don't know. I just thought I'd make that point. But I like the pictures. That girl in the red? I like that picture. Members in RV at Nunavut joined others in the community to stage a physically distanced parade to help local residents celebrate Canada Day. Wow. Because they had to. Members in Leduc, Alberta, teamed up with the Leduc Fire Services Pipes and Drums to salute essential grocery store, hospital, and seniors facilities workers. Nah. No. No. Get into the good stuff, please. There's gotta be there's gotta be more than that. A North Vancouver, BC member recently saved the life of an elderly man who suddenly fell to the ground when she was out patrolling. She administered CPR and was able to restart his heart before the ambulance arrived. Okay, if he's telling the truth about that, that's pretty cool. You give CPR and you start somebody's heart again? That's pretty awesome. I like that. North Van Cop saves man's life. Yeah, see, that shit makes me feel good. North Vancouver, eh? Oh, Jesus Christ. Could you imagine working there? But, good job. Why don't they say the name? It's so funny. The RCMP, a member does, like, say her, say the person's name. Can't you say the person's name? Like, say the name. Would it kill you to say the member's names? I'm not blaming you, Brian. Well, maybe I am. Before the ambulance arrived. On the left Can I say something about North Vancouver? Maybe I shouldn't. North Vancouver RCMP. God. I had to work with somebody that was... I'll tell it an, another day. I shouldn't say. <sighs> it was a nightmare. On the Labrador coast, two Nain detachment members, Constables Camille Quiron and Peter McIntyre, were both inducted into the 2020 Nick Coates Impaired Driving Team for their work to reduce impaired driving, undoubtedly saving lives. In fact, four of the top nine performers in the division are from Labrador. That's pretty cool. Four out of the top nine performers are from Labrador. Way to go, Labrador. That's cool.
I like that. Impaired drivers. Got to think, though, maybe there's no calls coming in. I don't know. I had, uh, but that's awesome. I'm not making fun of that. That's great. Impaired driving's bad. But I used to work with a guy. His name was Bell, and it was in Duncan. And, uh, <laughs> man, around 2, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, Bell would go out and search for impaired drivers. My watch commander encouraged it. Guess what the rest of the watch was doing Well, Bell was getting impaired drivers? You get an impaired driver, you're tied up for three hours. Guess what we were doing? We were taking calls because we had to, right? Finally, we said, Bell, like, can you cool it, man? Yeah, it'd be great to be proactive. But Duncan, when you're getting 45 calls a shift, a night, 45, I shit you not, and there's only four members? I just thought I'd share that with you. Another member in Manitoba, Constable Josh Gogal, rescued a woman whose car was submerged in icy water. Not long before that incident, Constable Gogal was driving and noticed a few of a farmer's bales of hay on fire and was able to prevent the whole feedlot from going up in flame. I'm not going to repeat that member's name, but that's pretty cool. That guy's kicking ass, ain't he? I like that. It's all right. I'd like to know how he saved that person, though, that was floating in the... He didn't jump in. How'd you do it? More details, please, Brian. Thanks. Last month, members of the Swift Current Saskatchewan Rural Detachment were dispatched to a serious single vehicle collision involving a motorcycle. Constable Jared Reed observed a man with a significant injury to his lower leg and quickly applied his personal issue tourniquet to stop the bleeding. He stayed with the man to keep him calm until EMS arrived and no doubt Help saved this man's life. This man's life. Hmm, no. No. No, he put a band-aid on a leg. I'm sorry. I mean it sounds cool and everything, but No. No, you gotta do better than that. Come on, tourniquet. <laughs> Issued tourniquet? Puts it on somebody's leg and I shouldn't make fun of this because we never get any credit for anything. And Brian is out there giving credit to members, even if they don't deserve it. So I like it. Way to go, Reed. Good job on the tourniquet, I guess. Okay, yeah. Oh. But weak. Weak. It's weak. That's a weak one. Red Deer Alberta RCMP created a community engagement team to help keep the community's spirits up during the earlier phases of the COVID pandemic. This included proactive patrols of the city on a daily basis to increase police visibility and provide peace of mind for residents challenged by COVID-19. Businesses and residents said they felt reassured and grateful for the extra support when they needed it. What? What? They did their job? What do you... I gotta rewind that. I gotta hear that again. I'm sorry. I gotta hear that again. <laughs> did he say they were searching this, doing patrols and stuff? I gotta rewind that. Proactive patrols of the city. No, 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 you're grasping. Brian, you're grasping. Also in June, White Butte, Saskatchewan RCMP responded to a call of a 30-year-old man in cardiac arrest from an overdose. Constable Robert Morley administered two consecutive doses of naloxone before he could get a pulse and the man began to breathe again. Without Constable Morley's quick thinking to administer naloxone, the outcome may have been tragically different. And now he can keep on doing what he's doing. I hate to, I don't even want to say it because I'm new, but uh, naloxone, for what? Oh, fuck. Good job. We gave naloxone, gave it to him and... Uh, All too often, our members are abused or injured. As just a couple of examples, our thoughts are with two members in Burnaby, both of whom were recently spat on in separate mental health crisis calls. 
It's not fun being spat on. I was spat on twice, too. Separate times. I had to take the uh, cocktail. HIV cocktail. That kicks the shit out of you. It's funny when you take the cocktail and how your detachment doesn't give a fuck that you took the cocktail. That's why there should be a union. That's why there should be a union, the RCMP. Because when I took it, I, I felt like I was dying towards the end of it. I hit day 25 and I stopped taking it. It just kicked the living shit out of me. I worked every day and everybody turned their head. They didn't give a, they turned a blind eye. Is that the saying? They didn't give a, a, a care in the world that uh, I was on the cocktail. And then towards the end of my career, nobody said a word. To be truthful, I don't even think I told them. What's the point, right? Why am I talking like this? But uh, it's shitty when bad people spit on you that are infected and you got to take that shit. Oh, okay. Onward. And we wish a thorough recovery to our member in Cold Lake, Alberta, who was beaten recently with her own baton. We're thinking of all of you and thankful to all of you. And we wish a thorough recovery to our member in Cold Lake, Alberta, who was beaten recently with her own baton. Okay, that almost made me cry. See, he's a good guy. You know he's a good guy. He got choked up there. And and I don't even really... It was about a, a member that got hurt. And that actually gave me a little chills. See, that's why... This guy is a good shit because he feels it and he's, I like that. And I want to learn more. I'm going to rewind what he just said because I was surprised that he just said that. Yeah, I'm watching this for the first time. Beaten with her own baton in cold. I got to know where this is. Both of whom were recently spat on in separate mental health crisis calls. And we wish a thorough recovery to our member in Cold Lake, Alberta. Cold Lake. Who was... I gotta look this up. You know what? I'm just gonna read it with you. So this member goes to Walmart, Walmart parking lot, and the bad guy, who's around 44, takes the officer's baton and started striking the Mountie in the head numerous times. Fucked up. This is not going to be popular, but we should not be carrying a baton. You know how many years I was a cop for? Frontline? Never once used my baton. The baton is a waste of space, a waste of weight. The belt weighs too much with it. I used to take that baton and just throw it in my bag and not use it. I've never used it. I never, I've never used it. It doesn't work when you want to use it. You want to hit, you hit somebody with it. It's not going to work. You got pepper spray, okay? You got a taser, you got a gun. Baton is ridiculous. Get rid of the baton, Brian. We don't need it. It is the most ridiculous tool that the RCMP have. It's And it's right in front of you. Anybody can take that thing out. How about that? How about get rid of the baton? That makes me angry. I hated the baton. Never once took it out for anything. I've never seen another member take it out. Why do we have it? Has anybody ever asked themselves, why do you have the, why, like, why do they have the baton? Doesn't work. Like, forward, back, forward, jab, jab. No, 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 never. Can't even break a window with it. Never. I don't know, I just lost my shit there. Right away when I seen baton. I hated the baton. I'm gonna keep on reading. Smashing the window of an occupied vehicle with a baton. Well, well I'm a big fucking bullshitter because that guy managed to smash the window with the baton. He smashed a window of an occupied vehicle with a baton and tried to steal it. He threatened a second driver with a knife and the baton well, that's too bad the man was arrested without incident. I don't know how bad that member is. I uh, hope the... I wish the member well. I really do. Of course. Uh, Brian got choked up there. I got a little choked up with him talking about it. 
and uh, looks like the member is going to recover in the hospital. Hopefully. Okay. What did we learn? Get rid of the baton. It's just dangling there for people to take. Our gun is in there for pe- people grab onto the gun. They're not getting it out. Well, maybe they will. It's possible. Pepper spray is covered. Baton is just dangling there. We've shared a video calling on political leaders in the media to back off of their unfair and biased comments directed towards our members. Comments directed towards our members. Wow. Okay. They've told political leaders in the media to back off. What's a political leader? Okay. Political leader is Trudeau. Commissioner. Andrew Scheer. I think that's who he's talking about. I you know, I'm not the smartest guy when it comes to politics. I, I'm kind of a dummy. But I think that's who he's talking about. He's told them to back off, those guys. And uh, isn't it amazing that it takes Brian to say that and not the commissioner who works for those political leaders? What did they... And I know he's getting... He's talking about Chief Adam. The arrest, which was disgusting, and Chief Adam got off on the arrest, which is gross and disgusting. Trudeau comes out and says there's systemic racism, and then Crown says we can't go with charges. He's off, and now Chief Adam is going to get 200 grand probably from getting uh, injuries to himself, and it's going to go on and on and on and on. And and now uh, members are what Trudeau did put every member in danger. Because it gave the right for the bad guy to strike back. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah, you fucking A, back off. Yeah. Yeah. He sees it. He sees it. Every member sees it. In the coming weeks, we'll be sending out an email communication survey to all our members so you can tell us what's working and what else you'd like to see and how you'd like to receive information. I hope you'll take a few moments to share your feedback. Another survey. Well, maybe it'll work. This guy seems... This guy seems pretty serious. He's awkward as shit, Brian, when you talk, but... Like I am. But uh, he's... Maybe the survey will do something. Maybe you should fill out that survey. If I was working, I'd fill out that survey. Absolutely. Got to get rid of that white shirt, though, underneath that blue shirt. There. Our next initiative will be to share a series of member behind the badge videos, highlighting the positive impact and difference you create in your community. God, I can't wait to talk about that. That'd be awesome. If they're really going to do that, that's awesome. Because I got to talk about that. I want to talk about that. (laughs) Some of the most dedicated and professional cops in the world. Fucking A. Who also happen to be real people, just like other Canadians. Well. Hold your head high because Canadians support you and respect your work. You know what? Canadians do respect members' work. That's true. I like that. I say that a lot, don't I? I like that. But he's right. He's dead right. Your family. We are 20,000 strong across Canada and we can generate our own positive voice for the outstanding work you do every day. Like my voice. It's very positive. Every day. Stand up. Be proud. Keep doing what you're doing. We have your back. We have your back. Hmm. We have your back. Wouldn't that be nice for once? You know, where was he when those members tasered Dzanski at the airport, right? They basically lost their life. They got destroyed. I wish he was around. Yeah, you know what? A union just might work. Or when Mantle kicked that guy in the head that was the bad guy was on the golf course with a shotgun, acting like an idiot. And then Mantle basically, they suspended without pay. Where was Brian during that? 
or Dolman. What's his story? I'd like to know his story. If you just talk to me, Dolman, come over and talk to me. I would like to hear your story. I bet you have a story. I know I do. I can't wait to tell my story. It's a good one. One day, I will. But uh, good job, Brian. 